Hi guys, this is Alexander calling in from Brightfield Studios. Today I'm going to do something a little bit different. This is my first time that I'm going to do a Let's Play. Now, what I'm normally doing is developing my own games and uh, sharing with you guys my 3D modeling. And uh, I'm also going to try to start sharing some of my coding in Unity. Um, but due to the Corona crisis, I've had sort of a slump in the, in the coding part of things as I work from home uh, and I basically sit in the same spot as I'd be coding. Uh, so to relax instead I want to share with you uh, some Let's Plays. And to kick that off I want to start out with one of my favorite games which is Foundation. And there's two reasons for that. The first reason is the fact that Foundation is created by a smaller team, Polymorph. And um, they, um, they seem like a very passionate group of uh, developers who are sharing their love with this game and adding on small patches of new functionality over time. It's an adorable game and I like just to play it really to uh, relax. And uh, the second reason is of course that they have released their 1.6 patch just now. There's, some, uh, there's plenty of new content and although I have tested it out just a little bit, I'm actually going to share with you guys my first time experience playing this game. So while we wait this to load up, I'm going to share with you, uh, this is the preview version by the way, so it's only, only the valley map that's available. Um, but yeah, so one of the reasons why I really like Foundation is its organic feel to uh, city creation. It's a, it's a medieval city creator for those of you guys who haven't tried it. And it has this really cool organic approach to, to letting the city uh, spread out. In fact, the villagers themselves get to create their own houses. You don't plop down their private homes. You, instead, you just paint out which areas you'll allow them to build their homes. And they go about their life building the homes as they see fit. And it's really cool. It gets this really nice organic uh, growth to things. So to kick off here, we need to start by choosing a, 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 a starting hex. And uh, having scanned out the valley map before, I feel uh, inclined to use this hex right here, both because it has all the resources I need uh, but it's and it's near the water and I also really like this little um, This little point here all along the coast which allows me to, to mess around with some cool uh, uh, Scenic views with where I, I already got some plans going on. Let's just say that so I'll start off by um, Setting up my city here and the first thing we have to do is to set up a village center So one of the cool things about uh, the 1.6 version is the fact that they have uh, redone a lot of their UI and it makes it a lot more intuitive for new players to get started with. And so the first thing we need to do is to get up a village center. And the village center is sort of, a, as it says, a small resource depot. I sort of imagine it as a sort of a mail order village. It comes <laughs> ready to go in a box. And when you open the box, it pops open and all your new villagers come on out and ready to go. Just add some water and you get to start on with your city. So. The first thing we need to do is to get a builder's workshop going. And this is also new with the 1.6 version. This is something that hasn't been available previously and builders basically just hung around. Uh, they were homeless, well not homeless per se, but they had no office <laughs> or no, no production building. Uh, but now they do, it's the builder's workshop. And to get cracking there, we need to assign a few people to be builders. I like to start out with two, just so that uh, we got always someone grabbing some gear, grabbing some resources while someone else is building something. Uh, and now that they are assigned, we can start considering what we want to build. So the first thing I want to build is to get cracking on some food. Uh, and to do that, we'll need a gathering hut. And the gathering hut uh, can be then assigned near, uh, for example, this set of bushes here these berry bushes, just so they get the shortest possible walking distance. And already we start to see a, a slight indication of this organic approach that I'm talking about. So as people walk back and forth, they actually start making these paths in the, in the, in the, in the, in the grass. And that uh, over time will become more and more permanent and we'll start getting these, uh, these walkways where the little villagers have found the shortest ways. And it's sort of like, you know, when you, when you, in real life you're, out and about and you see that some some architect has decided to build this fancy um, park with these lanes and then everyone just basically crosses the, <laughs> crosses the grass to get to the other side instead of following the lanes and you get these these walkways along the grass uh, which shows how sometimes uh, you know design does not always match user needs 
Um, and this is sort of the same thing here. You can you, you'll quickly see which routes people prefer choosing to to walk around on based on where they walk. And it's just again this organic way of building the city. Uh, another uh, resource we need to start gathering is of course wood and of course rock. So we'll start by looking at uh, the the wood here, and we'll need a lumber camp for that. So some of these production buildings they have this red circle around themselves, and this represents um, this negative impact this building has on the desirability for villagers to live near the lumber camp. Because obviously, you know, um, Heinrich here, he does not want to live near this lumber camp and get woken up every morning uh, to the chopping of wood. And so this sphere sort of it gives an indication that this will be reducing the desirability for people wanting to live in this area. And the reason why I plop this down right here is because, as you've noticed, there's a rocky outcrop right next to it. And that means I'll have to, I can put my stonecutter camp here as well. And it too has a negative impact on, on um, desirability. By plopping those down in, in, in the vicinity next to each other, we'll actually have uh, gathered all of our sort of negative desirability production buildings in the same area. And that way we don't bring down the, the desirability elsewhere around in our town. So before people start working on, on um, resources, we also need to make sure that they are um, aware that they can start to harvest. And to do that, we'll be using these development zones that you paint in. Uh, and again, it, it just shows how there's a sort of a, a secondary level between me, the, the lord of the, the city, and the people, uh, which gives them a, a flexibility to do what they want. I don't actually assign them to do anything. I just give them an indication of what they should be doing, and then they go about doing it in their own pace. Uh, and likewise, I'm also going to keep, keep my keep my building uh, or keep my resource harvesting to a certain minimum um, because I want to make sure that these trees get chopped down first and then uh, once they have been chopped down then I'll go on to add other areas to get chopped down that way I get full I can control as much as I as I want where I'm gonna clear out these trees because I'm gonna need these trees cleared out so I can start building other buildings Speaking of, let's start looking at other buildings. So we have um, the berries being picked. However, we have no way of getting those berries to our villagers. And if we look closely here, now Dominique, I would, Dom, I thought that was a, a guy's name, Don, <laughs> Dominique, uh, she has a certain set of needs. She has uh, some primary needs, which is currently just water, but she also has food as a need. And to get um, Dominique some food, we need to get her uh, give her the opportunity to buy that food and that introduces what was called the monument system Which is another really cool feature in the foundation series So what the monument feature does is that it allows me to custom build certain buildings the way I want them to look so instead of having a finished stencil like this uh, woodcutter camp uh, the marketplace as a monument allow I can actually build build and customize things as I want uh, and You know make this market and into a custom market, which you'd see nowhere else in no, no other game. Um, but I'm going to do the bare minimum here, just so I can get it quickly up and running. Set up the base uh, food stall, get that going, um, which will allow me to sell berries back to the people. I'm also going to need um, a granary, and the reason for that is um, in, this, in this food chain here, uh, or resource chain, uh, the granary is what um, allows the storage so whereas the berries are picked here they don't actually the the market salesperson will not be able to access those berries unless it's via sort of a trade hub in the form of a granary and so i'll need a granary with a, a an, an allocated transporter to make sure that um, those berries are stored and distributed to those who need the berries which would in this case be the market stall handler so let's get some woodcutters going. We'll need a miner going. I'm sorry this is uh, taking so long. It's just there's so much to talk about. You know, I'm really excited about this game. I love playing it, and I just want to share it with, with you all the little nuances. I mean, like just the from from the tiny little animations to the cute way that the, the the focal point of the camera makes it so it look makes it feel like it's like a tiny miniature town. Um, it it just makes you drown in all of the minute details and then. 
I won't be the most efficient player of this game today, just because I just enjoy taking it slow and enjoying um, enjoying the scene, the view. So we got our um, we got our berry bush going. We have our marketplace going. I'll be able to assign people to those roles once they're up and running. Um, let us ha let's have a little look at what else we need to get done. So we got the granary going. We got the transporter. Uh, all of this is fine. Our market is now. Uh, in place we can assign someone Agnes will be our market tender and we also need to give her something to sell which would then be the berries now one would think that would sort of link those two but like I said you need the granary in between so just remember that if you boot up foundation on your own uh, and you'll also be able to edit on the market later and add uh, more features to the to the market as you go and that has something to do with splendor I'll come back to that when we touch upon the estate system um, but in the beginning like I said I'm just I just really want to make sure that people's needs are met uh, and uh, once that is done I can start tweaking and uh, refurbishing and making things look nice awesome so let's see what else we can build here so we got our builders workshop done lumber camp gathering hut granary we, of course, <laughs> well, 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 we need a well, of course. And the well has a positive green desirability sphere around it. And, of course, that's because, you know, most people, they enjoy having water available. And uh, living next to the water um, is a nice thing to get that, to get access to that. So um, that's going to bring up, you can see, it's already brought up the desirability to average just by having access to water nearby. And that's going to help me when I get around to... Uh, having residential areas which I don't have access to yet because my my villagers are simply not high enough uh, they don't have a, that perk yet speaking of let's look at the village in total we have eight villagers we have zero newcomers they all came out of the box as serfs and the only way that you get new villagers into your town is through immigration so currently there is no repopulation there's no um, no little villagers coming together in their house and producing small, cute, new little villagers. That may be a function later, but currently there's only immigration as a way of um, enforcing your, um, or, 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 or building your population. And so to be able to ensure that the immigration rises, we need to make sure that the global happiness level is high, because if people are not happy, no one will want to move in. Uh, and of course that currently is being met by the, the food and the water needs. Uh, which we will meet shortly and hopefully get people up and running and uh, or sorry uh, happy and smiling Until then we will ha we can rename our village. I already have an idea of what I want it to be called Brightfield naturally the glorious village of Brightfield will um, Be soon will, has its humble beginnings here along the, the coastline and uh, not really a coastline It's more of a lake I guess uh, but soon it will be a thriving metropolis in the sense that a medieval town can be a, a thriving metropolis. And much of this will be thanks to um, Oliver here, standing around, spending his free time, staring blankly into the void. Yes, hopefully he will have something to do soon. The well is coming along swimmingly, and uh, our granary is soon done. It only requires a few more, um, a few more logs, I guess. And uh, we will have our food chain ready to go. Let's see. Um, on top of that, what else we can do? Uh, I know that we'll have to start planning for residential soon. And I think I'm going to start plotting that down here uh, using the screen space as I can. I know there'll be a, a rustic church incoming soon uh, and a Lord Manor. Uh, and I already have great plans for the Lord Manor. I can imagine the Lord sitting here in his manor with this nice nice yard and uh, some maybe some a water fountain and looking out over the lake so I'm, I'm definitely want the the, um, the lord manor to be located down here and maybe the church at the end I, somehow i always see you know when you're in these cute old medieval towns the church is always near the market square so i'm thinking we need to have the the church near the market square maybe up against this um this uh this well here then again, the, the church itself doesn't really care about the desirability, so in that sense, I should be saving this for housing. Um, but I just really like the idea of having somehow the, um, the church near this well. Hmm, maybe, maybe this is the best way to go, and then I can clear this out. Speaking of, how are we doing on extraction here? We've cleared out a little bit. Um, it's going slowly, 
Can we get some me more people? Ah, there you go. Oliver, you unemployed. I almost said you lazy layabout. We could get you to start working, but I need to put you as a transporter, actually. So in that sense, it's good that I saved him. I knew I was saving him for something. Uh, and that means we need to assign uh, the berry slot in the granary. So now we've completed that, that building chain. We have our berry pickers, um, Heinrich, who collects the berries, and Oliver will then go and pick up the berries and place them in the granary and store them for safekeeping. And then whoever was our uh, market tender, Agnes, she will, once those ber berries are available in the granary, um, bring those out for sale and we will be able to feed our population and the great people of Brightfield will have something to eat. So it will be great. Hopefully that will bring about some more happiness and um, we can start getting in some more immigrants because we definitely need the work labor. Just need to drink some water. So let's see here. Dominique is gathering her wood. We're getting, we have some wood. We quite ha have quite a lot of food actually. Just went to zero now that it was reserved and taken off to the market. Um, but uh, I think we got everything we need right now. I guess we could speed this up a little bit. And um, while we mess around with that, I can ta start talking about some of the other systems here. So we've, lo we've gone through our development zones. Uh, we've gone through the public, or the, um, the public buildings, yeah. And I guess the reason why it says public buildings is because the whole the whole residential building system is through the painting system that we'll get to later. So private housing is done through that system instead. Uh, I have no walls yet. And then we get to the estate system. And this is actually really neat. This is sort of the tech tree for foundation where you have three tech, uh, uh, three branches to build on. And it's the labor branch or labor estate, the kingdom estate and the clergy estate. And as far as the way I understand labor, it sort of re represents the, the cause of the people. And by, build, uh, by bring, uh, increasing influence within the labor estate and building splendorous labor buildings, you can start unlocking labor things such as the warehouse, uh, the builder's workshop, sculpture, some, a fisher hut and the tavern. Whereas when you invest in the kingdom uh, branch, you are looking at military with a wooden keep and you're also looking at, you know, weaponsmithing and those kinds of tech uh, upgrades. And when it comes to the clergy, we're looking at the monastery and some church add-ons and things like that. So, depending on where, what you want to prioritize, uh, you can act, you'll you'll be able to get all of these features, but it, you'll be able to unlock them in different um, by prioritizing differently. And, and I, our first priority will be the warehouse because we're going to need it for trade. So, how are we doing here? We got. Two, one out of two people are happy, or basically we're fulfilling 50% of people's needs. And now that we've finally got the well going, people will be able to drink. There's probably a huge queue for people who want to get water. Um, and uh, we'll see the happiness increasing as people's needs are satisfied. Uh, there you go, you can see. He gets his, uh, Steven gets his water. Uh, Kini Gunde is getting her water. Everyone's getting water and food, and they're, they're happy now. So we, we can see the... The global happiness is increasing and that's our actually our next quest we need to assign everyone a job and we want to make sure that happiness reaches 100 and maintaining at 100 is obviously our best uh upper chance of getting more immigrants it's not guaranteed you'll get immigrants but it's a great way of uh increasing the the, um, the chance that immigration will occur now currently it's disabled because we it's sort of a locked by the questing system but once this gets unlocked by this quest here, uh, we'll manage. We'll be able to see that um, uh, that there's sort of a, a chance of um, of immigrants arriving. Excuse my my phone. It's, I'm gonna put it on mute here. It's just uh, pouring in with the messages here. You know, after, even though the workday is over. <laughs> so there you go. We can see now immigration seven days away week away and the happiness and employment is high making the probability of immigration a maximum so uh, out of those uh, it'll, it'll tell us the amount of people who have walked by our village that week and uh, there's a probability that a certain amount of those villagers or people will want to stay and uh, settle in our village so next up we don't actually have any quests so we can start looking into um, just talking, just talking a little bit more about what we want to do. 
And while uh, while I talk about that, we can have a little look at uh, uh, some of the the woodcutters. No, the miners here. I think that's a. It's always cool to see what pe these animations that people have put uh, so much effort into, whether it's picking berries or um, carrying these boxes around. I love it. The miners are adorable too because they have these little little candles. Sorry, there. Ah. There you go. Don't run away from me, Emily. They have the little candles. So this is a feature with a 1.6 patch. They've clustered together all the rock resource gathering rolls. Uh, rock and coal and those those rolls. So they, they all have the same model, which is probably why she has a candle even though she's out, out on the grass all the day. Um, because uh, she may just be a coal miner and then she'll have to be on the ground. Emily, the coal miner. Anyway, so a message from the kingdom. Here you go. The kingdom recognizes your efforts in, in establishing your settlement. So our city has finally been recognized. We are but your humble servant, at least for now. And we gain, as you can see, 10 or 4 influence with uh, the kingdom and 4 influence with labor. And, and it will give me a new quest. So we have our uh, one new villager and we have also acquired some new... Uh, uh, buildings. We now have acquired a residential zone, which means that people now require residential housing. Dun dun dun. So uh, we'll just start by painting up some this area right here to allow for some residential housing. Um, as far as I know, this this desirability doesn't affect the villagers' housing in the sense that they'll live there and be miserable. But what I have noticed is that they simply won't build houses there. So if they build houses, you basic, you're fine. Um, but uh, over here, most likely, we won't see any houses be built anytime soon until we make this either more appealing or they're uh, simply, I guess, forced to live there. Uh, but that's usually just they don't build anything and they'll just be put as they don't have anywhere to stay and they'll be upset that they don't have anywhere to stay instead of just building somewhere and hating it. <laughs> So that being taken care of, people will soon have their houses and uh, we can start looking into some of the other buildings that we unlock. The first being, and of course the most important, the Lord Manor. Now the Lord Manor, like I said, I have already set my eye on this nice little out, uh, outcrop right here against the water. I'm going to put down the central node right there, plop down the, the core building. And I'm already going to plop in a tower as well, just because I know I want to have each one of these these uh, modules. They'll have a they'll be able to have a function, and I know I want to already have two functions uh, from the get go. So, like I said, I usually do the bare minimum solution just to get started, uh, uh, unless I know I I want to have a certain there's a reason behind me adding that. So I won't be adding any flags or anything like that just yet. I just need to get this up and running, uh, and I think this is this is nice. It's just here on the edge. And I'll, I'll add a little hedge and some, some bushes and stuff like that later to get this not, this this estate going. Um, but this is good for now. Uh, and of course, living next to the Lord is uh, desirable. So we saw there was a, a slight increase in desirability here. But the second thing that I need to get going, which is also a monument, is the uh, <laughs> the wooden bridge. Wah, 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 wah. No, the rustic church, which I obviously missed. The ru Let's try that again. The third try. Third try. Rustic church. And um, I wanted to put it here, but now that I thought about it, I'm thinking maybe I should put it here instead. So I'm gonna plop that that node down and get the church right right here with the tower. Is it called a steeple? A church steeple? I think that's what it's called. Or is the steeple some other part of the, ch uh, the tower? No, the church. I mean. Something like that. Cliche church. Oh, of course, we need to have a we need a cross going. There you go. Doesn't that look great? I, I really want this up against this, though. I don't. See, doesn't that just make it feel more? Oh, now that's new. Okay, cool. Um, I just feel this is more like in line with how I imagine it. Or, or like... Maybe the well could have been here, and then this could have been straight up against the market. Because what I want is I want like stalls next to each other here, and then, hmm. Yeah, that's rough. I guess I, I'll, I'll put it here. I just can't make my mind up. 
something like that. So it's sort of aligned with this well. Yeah. Yeah, let's do that. All right. So, yeah, we got the bell tower. We got the door. We got the core. Now, I could add on this, this as well. Get some extensions going to make it even bigger, uh, which makes more people... It makes it be able to have more visitors. And therefore, more people can get their new craving going, which is um, religion, depending on what rank these citizens are. Uh, but I'm going to keep it at the bit minimum, like I said, just because it requires so much stone and so many resources, and I'm, I'm on my bare bones. Uh, speaking of, I got some unemployed people, so let's see what we need to, who, what kind of roles we can fulfill. I definitely want another miner, uh, and I want another woodcutter, so I can start upping those, um, those quantities. Actually, you know what we need? We need um, a carpenter. Because then we can start trading. Let's do that, yeah. Okay, so we'll go get a sawmill. It's also a construction building, so we have to... Uh, I'll put it, uh, plop it down here just so that I don't waste any... Uh, um, you know, get, keep all my industrial buildings in one place. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll transfer one of these guys into a carpenter once, once that's done. Um, yeah, see, already just at 70%, that's enough to, to reduce the... The, the red so probability it's it's low because of the residential space so we need to get more residential space going um, let's do let's do a little bit here let's see if that that gets people going gets the people going it's provocative um, I guess you could put you could put a house here I don't want it any closer than that because I want I want this to be my my um, estate um, I guess I could also plop it here. Let's just hope they don't cut down any of my trees just yet. Um, because I want those trees. So basically what, what happens is if I were to plop this down, you can see that it removes some of the trees. And as far as I know, those trees I won't get the resources for. So I'm really trying to clear out the trees before I start, um, um, before I start um, building anything there. So, and also just just to be tidy, I like to remove the the harvest the harvest colors once the trees are gone, just so I it's less color. I have more con like overview or oversight over what um, I got left to harvest. All right, starting to look pretty good. Um, we got our church going. We got our uh, Lord Manor going. We have our uh, house coming in here and our sawmill. I'm going to up the priority on that sawmill because I know the planks are necessary uh, for a lot of these buildings. Like, I can't get the Lord Manor done until I get it. And I also think the church needs it. Yeah, the church needs planks. And so these won't be done until this is done. Uh, so I might as well prioritize the sawmill and get that done first. Uh, let's speed up a little bit here, and I want to turn that off just so I can. Um, what does this do? Huh? I don't know. Whatever. That's our harvest views, territorial boundaries. I also like just keeping. That's the only one I keep on, just so I have slight control over how um, how much of my city I got. Um, so, let's see here. What else do we have to do while we wait for this to be done? I've gone through the estate system. I think, did I unlock those? No, I did not. So here we go. I unlocked some, uh, or I have the opportunity to unlock the warehouse and the bailiff office. And that spends the, the influence I gained by completing or sort of uh, accepting the, um, the king's request in the beginning there. Um, and that means I can now build a warehouse and unlock the bailiff office. So I'm going to immediately go about setting up a, uh, a warehouse. And it too has a negative influence on my uh, the attractivity of living here. So I'm going to put this... That would be a cool... Maybe something like this. I hope people get, still get access. I don't think these guys like Heinrich. Probably doesn't like it too much that I built this production building right next to their house. 
Um, but that's that's life, Heinrich. You got you can't be in the way of progress. You know, you gotta just you just gotta accept that sometimes that um, it's for the greater good. So hopefully this sawmill is done soon. It's just missing four stones, which Steven is bringing right there. Go, Steven. You are taking it, taking it over the finish line here, Steven. You got it. Oh, wonderful. The sawmill is complete, which means we should assign someone to man the sawmill. And I am thinking woodcutter level one or miner level one. Uh, definitely woodcutter level one. So Gwyneth, you get the opportunity to be the first carpenter of Brightfield. Gwyneth sounds like a, a woman's name. Let's see if I guessed that right. I got wrong. I got Dominique wrong, so I guess you know you never know. Um, she hasn't found her job yet. Let's let's see if she can't find her, her job. She's on her free time. She probably picks up her job when she's on her free time. But yeah, Gwyneth was a lady. Fabulous, clearly 22-year-old lady, and now she found her job. So there you go. So now Gwyneth is going to take some of those logs and start sawing away. Do we get to see her? There, yeah, there you go. That's some efficient sawing going on there, Gwyneth. Clearly, those are some efficient hands, just prying the logs apart and sanding them down with her rough hands. I would not want to be Gwyneth's husband. <laughs> All right, so. There you go. We got another villager. Woo! Another villager vi joining the glorious city of Brightfield. Let's see here. The person hasn't arrived yet, so I guess we'll have to wait with assigning them a job just yet. But we can plan ahead. I am thinking since we lost our, our woodcutter, I'm going to assign uh, her to be him or her to be a woodcutter as soon as they arrive here in town. Oh, and we can now, um, probably we should prioritize, um, what are people missing? How did I look at that? Immigration. So, happiness average residential is high, so they actually have enough housing. I think we're just going to let this go. What I could do is I could prioritize, for example, the, the Lord Manor if I wanted to. Um, but it's not really like I'm in a hurry. The only thing is, uh, that I really want, um... The only reason would be one of the the functions the Lord Manor has is they can increase my treasury hold, and it's really annoying looking at that I'm like uh, sticking at 500, and uh, that I can't gain any more money. It's basically all everything I'm earning right now goes to waste if I if it if they were to come in. I'm just just under, but yeah, it, anything over 500 is a waste because it just simply doesn't uh, gather in my hold. So by adding that function, then we get some more, um, uh, we get more vault space for our bank account to get rolling. So, Jean came in, Billy Jean arrived, and we will assign her to be, what was it we agreed on? I believe it was a woodcutter. That way we get more wood. Phrasing. And, um, wood is always useful, both for the housing market and for clearing trees, which let's just get a quick look. Yeah, we need to clear some more trees. I'm going to take away all of this just so I know that I'm on that side of the map. And let's just get all of this here. And all this. And yellow. Just get all this. <laughs> so no one wants to live here. It's probably too, too small an area. Two out of two. This is great. This is great. Now we are definitely on the rise. And we can start filling out all the different roles um, that we need to fill out. This, we also need the granner, uh, sorry, the warehouse to get rolling. And uh, then we will be s set to sail. Um, and you know, I think with that, we are going to round off. We have been playing for half an hour. And I'm going to cut this episode right there. And uh, if you like what you're watching and you want to join in on the future, join in on listening in on the future of Brightfield, then you should uh, like and subscribe, hit the bell to know that when I drop the next episode, which 
to be frank, I'm going to be recording right after this. And um, if you like what you see, comment in the comments below and tell me what more you want to see, what you like, what you don't like. I have literally no idea what I'm doing, so anything, any comments would be appreciated. <laughs>